you very much and uh, thank you for the kind invitation and thanks to Epic and Britain's and the community for organizing this wonderful event. We're in the House of Lords and you feel so important. <laughs> you feel really important? I mean, I came in here as a minister and now I'm the Prime Minister. That's really, <laughs> that's really impressive. Um, the House of Lords, I mean, I'm quite sure you know the, the history of this, of this building. It's the first time in here. This would have been the House of Parliament up until 1801. Um, and the art has been ruled, as many of you would know, from Westminster until about 1922. And we're commemorating all that period of time at the moment. Not only do we have responsibility in new communities, but have responsibility in culture uh, and equality as well. And we're doing a lot of a conversation at the moment, as you may know, about the decade of commemorations and what happened a hundred years ago. And in order to ensure that Ireland got its own parliament uh, almost a hundred years ago, there was a rising in the city, a proclamation was read out, and of the seven people who signed that proclamation, two of them were born outside Ireland, and two others were sons of people born outside Ireland. So there's always been people who came to Ireland who contributed uh, to, to the Irish political system and to what, uh, to what Ireland was trying to achieve. In fact, the first woman ever elected to the British Westminster Parliament in the 1918 election was uh, an Irish woman, not born in Ireland, but from Sligo, who married uh, a Polish count called Count Markiewicz. And uh, he was a great influence on in her. She became the first woman ever elected to the British Westminster Parliament. So we were in a historic building and uh, at a historic time of reflection in Ireland. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to say two things. One about education and one about employment. And uh, third thing just jumped into my head, so I'm going to say three things. <laughs> one about employment and one about, about the economy. The one other thing about education, and it was mentioned before, I'm a former school uh, teacher and principal in an area of disadvantage. The one other thing about education is that no matter what happens in your life, you may get sick, you may your relationship may, may break down, you may get a job and lose a job, um, there may be a tragedy in your life, and uh, you may lose confidence in yourself. But once you have education, you'll always, always, always bounce back. And it's interesting when you go around the world, and you go to some parts of the world where democracy is, is a new idea, or fundamentalism is, is running right, the thing that upsets and terrorizes the terrorists most is the idea of a young person with education. So always believe in the power of education that will always help you, regardless of what happens in your life, get the bounce back. The other thing that's important is, of course, employment. Because one of the most fundamental things to our identity, and you know when we're having a conversation with somebody, we get to know somebody, we always ask, um, you know, who are you, what's your name, where are you from, what's your job? And let's be honest, everybody, who comes to this country or from this country, there is an insatiable desire to work. It's fundamental to our identity. So don't ever believe anybody who says that some people are allergic to work. I don't believe that too for a second. I believe everybody fundamentally wants to make a contribution and fundamentally wants to work. The third thing I say though is about the, about the connection between the economy uh, and this type of program which is equality-based, which is integration-based. You know, they are not different conversations. We're having a conversation now and about growth, and about recovery, and about change in Ireland, about maybe learning some of the mistakes uh, of the past. And one of the biggest mistakes, in my view, over the last 10 years or so, is that we decided to discuss ourselves as living in an economy, and not in a society of talking about ourselves as taxpayers, instead of talking about ourselves as citizens. And then talking about in terms of growth, we now need to grow, we need to grow ourselves. But we talk about economic growth, rather than the growth uh, of humanity. And it's interesting, because we're used to the analogy about, about the roads, because, you know, the famous trade union leader in this country, uh, James Larkin, who said of him, that he thought it was as important to have a roads in the vase of your table as having a loaf of bread on your plate because the two of them are connected bread and roses work dignity and work aspiration and work but also the idea of having aspiration in your life as well so while my point is that we don't have conversations around integration around equality after we've talked about the economy because fundamental to any function
functioning economy and it's a kind of country that calls itself a republic. And so fundamentally, at the core of everything we do in the economy has to be the idea of equality. Because then you're going to work better, you're going to work harder, you're going to feel as if you are more productive because you feel that you are valued. And let's be honest, all of us woke up in the morning and all we ever want to feel is that we're valued. Valued in our families, valued in our workplace, valued in society. So they're not two separate conversations. They are, they are absolutely things. Um, I think what you're doing is so important. But can I say this to you uh, from my point of view, Ireland needs you so much, so much. You know, 20 years ago, there was a census taken in Ireland and only 0.6% of the population was born overseas. We lived in a very, very insular, inward-looking, conservative country where everybody looked and sounded pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. And it was a country that everybody wanted to leave. It's true. I have a brother who lives in Canada. I have a sister who lives in England. I have friends and family all over the world. Ireland, the country I grew up in, was a country that wanted to leave. I think we're the only country in Western Europe, actually, which has a smaller population now than it did 200 years ago than did when this was the actual House of Lords functioning. So now we have people from all over the world in a fantastic and wonderful compliment to Ireland who have decided to come to this country to work and to live and to contribute. And I think that is a fantastic compliment and I want to thank you uh, for that because we need you. And we need your expertise and we need your values and we need your sense uh, of hard work, and we need uh, everything that you can contribute uh, to this country. So please, always believe and always understand that Irish Ireland needs you as much as you uh, have needed Ireland in your life. So just again, to thank the officials from, from, from the Department of Justice who've worked so hard to support what business in the community and ethic are doing. But fundamentally, you yourselves, each individual person here, probably had at one stage or other thought it was too difficult to go down the road if you went down. Probably there were mornings when you thought, I can't do this. There were probably days when people around you were pulling their hair out and said, you know, I, I really wish you just believe in yourself a little bit more. Always understand that if somebody says that something is impossible, that impossible is only an opinion. And you've proved yourselves today worthy of, of you know, all the support that you got. And thank you for getting to this, this point, but I know everyone in this room has so much more to achieve. Thanks so much for the support.